Welcome again. In our readings right now, we are at Luke chapter 23, verses 1 through 5. Jesus is before Pilate, and Pilate questions Jesus. Let's read it. Verse 1. The whole company of them rose up and brought him before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting the nation, forbidding paying taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is the Christ, a king. When you got someone like Jesus on the scene, and and let me tell you, every one of you who claim to follow Jesus, if you are a follower of Jesus, you better take his example. You know, if you are a true Christian, you're supposed to be like Jesus. I always say this, but there used to be a, a big fad, you know, in the Christian world called WWJD. What would Jesus do? Good question. And, you know, honestly, most Christians do not know what Jesus would do. And that's the thing. That's the problem. But here, you know, Jesus is before uh, Pilate. Uh, Jesus' accuser said, you know, we found this man perverting the nation. Was Jesus perverting the nation? Absolutely not. It was, uh, that was a false accusation. Jesus was not perverting the nation. It was the sinners that were perverting the nation. And even to this day, we've got sinners that are perverting nations around the world. They also said that he forbid paying taxes to Caesar. Again, this is another lie. And this is what's going to happen to you. When you stand up against sin, when you stand up for righteousness, the way Jesus did. Now, remember, he said in the book of John, he said the world hates him because he testifies that its deeds are evil. He just wasn't a Jesus that went around, you know, just blessing everybody, healing everybody, kissing everybody, giving everybody hugs and blowing everybody kisses and hugging trees and everything, everything else like that. No, he went around rebuking sinners. He was rebuking sinners. I know some people say that Jesus was a friend of sinners, but Jesus was a friend of the repentant sinner. If you were not a repentant sinner, you're not going to be hanging around with Jesus very long because Jesus was very, very uh, vehement against sinners and against sin, against hypocrisy. You know, you look at one hand, he did heal people, but he healed people that came to him in humility, in desperation, in repentance. On the other hand, what Jesus did was he rebuked people. Oh yes, he rebuked people very, very strongly and very harshly. Think about some of the names he called people, sons of hell, sons of Satan, brood of vipers. You know, you're you're like whitewashed tombs. You look good on the outside, but but on the inside, you are like full of dirty, filthy, stinking, rotten sin. You are a hypocrite. How many times did he call people hypocrites? Many times. In fact, he made people angry many, many, many times. They tried to kill him time and time again, and eventually they did. So when you preach the way Jesus preached, when you do things the way Jesus did, when you actually take his example and you do things the way he taught his followers to do it, you know, like he said to his disciples, go and, and, and preach the gospel. The first thing they preached was repent. What does that mean? That means turn. That means change your mind. That means change your life. Change the way you think about sin. Change your lifestyle. You know, You're a sinner now, repent from sin and become righteous. That's what that means. And this is the same message that Jesus preached. He preached repentance in the beginning of his ministry, during his ministry. And again, you know, uh, he preached repentance after he died and rose again to to his church. I mean, not just to the world, but to his church. Think about it. He went to his church in the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, and he told them over and over and over again to repent or else serious judgment would fall upon them. If you get the message of repentance, one of two things are going to happen. Either you're going to be angry and you're going to start false accusing and you're going to be start you're going to you're going to start doing all this you know you're going to start kicking back against righteousness and you know being a hypocrite or you're going to humbly accept the message of repentance and actually you know repent and live righteously these people obviously did not repent and live righteously they were trying to find everything they could against jesus and what they couldn't find against jesus they made up against jesus you know like perverting the nation no he didn't pervert pervert the nation you know forbidding paying taxes no he didn't forbid paying taxes 
but they always mix a little bit of truth in there. And the truth is that is, uh, they said that uh, he himself, he said that he is the Christ, a king. Well, you know, he didn't go around preaching that he's the Christ, so to say. Okay, he didn't go around saying, I'm the king. Uh, that was kind of a truth, but kind of not a truth either. Uh, you know, it was other people who uh, proclaimed him as king. But, you know, we all know he is king, okay? But he just didn't go around arrogantly proclaiming himself as being king, as these people like to portray him to be. Verse 3, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, So you say. Hmm. Verse 4, Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee even to this place. So they accused him of being, you know, a disturber of the peace, so to say, or, you know, someone who incites riots or something like that. And then once again, if you are a true Christian, if you really take Jesus as your, as your example, as you're supposed to do, then, hey, you're not going to leave everybody peaceful, okay? Especially when they're in their sin. No, you are going to preach hard against that sin. You're going to make them feel uncomfortable. You're going to stir up people, okay? You look in the book of Acts, it says that they were, you know, the disciples caused no small stir, meaning they basically started a riot, so <laughs> more or less, okay? So that's what is going to happen if you really do what God wants you to do. Look what happened to Jesus here. Jesus said, if they hate me, they'll hate you because a servant is not greater than the master. A student is not any greater than the teacher. If you're fully, fully trained, you'll be just like your teacher. And as you go your way, uh, meditate upon this. Meditate upon the scriptures. Think about what God said. Never, ever let it leave your mind, okay? Never forget about it. Never get caught up in the things of this world, the things of this earth. Always keep your mind, keep your eyes, so to speak, fixed on God. So may blessings be upon you as you do so. Seek him with all your heart and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. And my prayer is that you will have revelation, spiritual revelation and insight beyond that of all your peers. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you.